Part of Aaron's plan was to upgrade Kit's tail lights with LEDs hidden behind some plexiglass. The problem is, every signal you hit, all the mother licking lights come on. Uh, I think it might be a ground problem. How's that? There's no ground even going to those lights, and it's feeding back through the parking lights. So in order to put LEDs in it, we have to isolate the bulbs from each other. If somebody want to put LED tail lights in their 85 Trans Am, then each bulb has to have its own ground. Each? OK. That sounds like a pain in the butt. All right, this is a quick mock-up circuit we put together to demonstrate the issue we're seeing in the vehicle. This bulb here represents the side marker lights in the vehicle. This is the parking light feed coming from the headlight switch. And this is the brake light input coming from the brake switch. This here is one of the taillight bulbs that are, that are being used in the vehicle. Applying power to the parking lights would normally power up just the parking lights in the vehicle, which includes the taillight bulb and the rest of the side marker lights. Applying 12 volts to the brake lights should only apply 12 volts to the brake lights alone, as such. However, this bulb is currently feeding back. When the parking lights are tied in with the rest of the marker lights, applying power to the brake lights is now allowing power to feed back, powering on the side marker lights in the vehicle. This can also be seen with voltage. For example, our input source is about 13.6 volts. Applying that to the parking light input feeds back about 10, 10 and a half volts. Anything around this area, even less, is enough to light up side marker lights, especially if they're LED lights. In place of the previous LED bulb we were using before, I now switch this out to a standard 1157 incandescent bulb. The circuit is still wired up the same way, with our marker lights tied into our parking lights and brake light feed being on its own. If we apply power to the parking lights, parking lights come on as we decide marker lights during normal operation. If power is applied to the brake lights, only the brake lights turn on. The side marker lights do not come on. Now it's not just because the incandescent light is on that it looks like the marker lights are on. We can also check the voltage to see if any is feeding back from the parking light feed. And as can be seen, 0 0.05 volts, or essentially 0 volts. There's no voltage feeding back to the marker lights on the vehicle using an incandescent bulb. And this is why it's important to choose the right LED bulb to use in the vehicle. All right, now here we are at the vehicle. All the marker lights are LEDs, and you'll notice that when the brake lights come on, the parking lights or marker lights come on as well. Now you may not necessarily experience this issue unless all the exterior lights are LEDs. When using incandescent bulbs, some of that voltage feeding back is eaten up by the incandescent bulbs. So if the incandescent bulbs do come on at all, they may be dim. They may not even come on at all. Here we have an LED light made by Dakota Digital, and as it's pretty obvious to see, it's a lot different from the last bulb we were using. For example, there's only a single bulb on board, there's much more complex circuitry to make sure it functions just like an incandescent bulb would. Um, there is a large heat sink which also acts as a mounting bracket, and a pretty neat feature that I don't see very often is that the board itself is coated in something called conformal coating which helps protect it from moisture. Now this circuit here is wired up the exact same way as the last bulb we had. So you'll notice that when we apply power to the parking lights, the parking light circuits and the marker lights come on. When we apply power to the brake lights, only the brake lights come on. To be sure of that, we can apply power to the brake lights and measure the voltage at the marker light input. 
we see about 1.2 volts not enough to turn on the LEDs 